This is the L3 Leadership Podcast, episode number 133. What's up, everybody? and Welcome to episode number 133 of the L3 Leadership Podcast. My name is Doug Smith, and I'm the founder of L3 Leadership, a leadership development company devoted to helping you become the best leader you can be. In this episode, you're going to get to hear my beautiful wife, Lara, make her L3 Leadership Podcast debut, and she's going to be sharing the top lessons that she learned in 2016. But before we get into that, just a few things I want to share with you. If you're new to this podcast, we're committed to bring you three or four episodes every single month to help you grow your leadership skills. One's always a leadership talk from our breakfast events. One's an interview I do with a high-level leader. And then once a month, you'll get a leadership lesson by me as well. If you've been with us for a while, I'd really appreciate if you would leave a rating and review and subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever you use to listen to podcasts. It really does make a difference. So thank you for that. I want to thank our sponsor, Henny Jewelers. They are a jeweler based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they're owned by my friend and a, and a mentor, John Henny. And I've known John for many, many years. And Laura and I actually got our engagement and wedding rings through Henny Jewelers. And they're just incredible. And what I really love about them is they not only have great jewelry, but they also invest in people. John gave Laura and I a book to help us prepare for our marriage. And he's been investing in me as a dad, as a husband, and as a leader now for for many years. And so if you're in need of a good jeweler in Pittsburgh, I encourage you to check out HennyJewelers.com. They're absolutely phenomenal and they're family-run business and uh, they are just amazing people. So check them out again. That's HennyJewelers.com. I also want to let you know that we are now introducing L3 Leadership Membership. That's right. You can now become a member of L3 Leadership. For just $25 a month, you'll get into our breakfast events for free every month. You're going to get a free L3 t-shirt. You have access to joining a mastermind group, access to the back end of our website, which is for members only, which is filled with extra content, resources, and courses to help you grow your leadership to the next level. If you'd like to learn more about L3 membership, go to l3leadership.org forward slash membership. Thank you so much. And let's jump right into Laura's talk. Enjoy it. And I'll be back at the end with a few announcements. Hey, everyone. This is Laura Smith, and I am so pumped to be with you on the podcast today. Happy New Year, everyone. I can't believe it's 2017. Time is really going fast. (laughs) Um, But I took some time over the holiday to reflect back on my year 2016. I hope all all of you guys had a chance to do that. And I just wanted to share with you some of my biggest lessons learned. And so um, I just have a few that I want to walk through. So let's get right into it. As many of you know, I had a baby girl, Olivia Catherine, back in May. And, um, so that kind of, I have some crazy life change that happened this past year in my life. And so my very first lesson, I think I learned this past year was just how to give myself grace. It took me probably about a good six months to find a new normal after having Olivia. And I really learned how to give myself a lot of grace. Um, labor was really challenging. My last trimester was really hard. Nursing was really hard to figure out going back to work after having maternity leave was really hard. I was dealing with a lot of emotions and hormones at the same time. But through it all, I really learned how to give myself grace, especially those first six months of becoming a mom. Grace to let my body heal, grace to figure out um, who this new child was in my house, (laughs) Uh, grace to, to let myself feel emotions and just be okay with that. And grace to to really never know what I was doing. Um, at the same time, grace to let Doug be a dad um, and mess up and put diapers on backwards and put them in the laundry hamper by accident and me wash them in the washing machine. Um, you know, grace to become a, a mom and a new person. Um, so it's that was my first big lesson was you know having a baby and just becoming a new mom is is just to give myself grace and I'm I'm glad that I was able to do that. Um, some other things I learned. As, as I became a mom this year was really that there's not, you know, you don't have to have a certain personality or a fit or a particular mold to be a good parent. Um, you don't have to be perfect either. And all you have to do is just keep showing up and keep growing in your relationship with God and bring your best every single day. And really all parents are to be celebrated. I, I really have a whole new respect for moms, especially, but for parents in general of having kids, it's just an incredibly, you should be, you should be celebrated because you truly are incredible. Um, you know, and if you're entering new seasons of life, like I entered this new season of becoming a mom this year, give yourself grace, um, a a big grace period. You're not going to, you need to find a new normal for yourself. Um, and one of the scriptures that actually really encouraged me this year is I went back to maternity from maternity leave to work. 
I was uh, a little <laughs> emotional uh, going back to work, but in Isaiah 65, verse 23, this really encouraged me. It says, you will not work in vain and your children won't be doomed to misfortune for you are a people blessed by the Lord and their children too will be blessed. I will answer you before you even call to me while you're still talking to me about your needs. I go ahead and answer your prayers. And that for me helped me get back to work after maternity leave, just knowing that my work's not in vain. My children won't be doomed to misfortune. Um, We're a blessed people. We're blessed by the Lord. Our children are blessed. And he knows every desire of my heart. And he answers me before I even speak those words or prayers. And so that was a really big encouragement to me this year. And also through, through motherhood, I think one of my friends shared me this quote with me, this quote, and I really loved it as well. It says, life doesn't demand perfection. It doesn't require you to be fearless, confident, or self-assured. It simply requires that you keep showing up. And that for me as a mom really helped me each and every day was that, you know, I'm going to mess up. I don't really know what's, how to become a mom. I don't really know what I'm doing, but just keep showing up and don't quit and have a great attitude and bring your very best for your kids. And so that was, those are some of the big lessons I learned as I became a new mom this year it was grace in this season, especially. Um, number two for me was really the value of relationships. Um, I kind of clung to an inner circle of about five or six moms where I really learned or leaned hard on these girls. And I'm just so thankful I did because they really carried me through and made me realize the importance of relationships in a lot of ways. Um, we can't do life alone. We need people. And I'm one of those people who can really, um, be introverted and kind of do things on my own or figure it out on my own. Um, and, but this season of life for me really helped me because I felt more vulnerable than ever before in a good way. And it humbled me, Um, you know, up until now I've kind of handled life's challenges, you know, uh, secluded sometimes, but motherhood made me rely on others. And really it was a great way for me to connect with other people. Um, being around community helped sharpen me. Um, when I looked back on my year, some of the, the avenues where I grew the most were in the presence of people and groups. Um, the leadership Academy at victory family church was a great place for me to grow, uh, mastermind groups with L3 leadership, Um, so many times when I was at conferences or with groups of people, those were some of my biggest avenues of growth. It helped sharpen me as a leader, helped me get through a transition or just encouraged me when I really needed it most. So being around people and in the presence of communities really helped me so much in my growth this past year. And I think that was my biggest lesson. One of my biggest lessons was just the value of relationships, value those around you, get connected, get involved. Don't isolate yourself um, in life. Uh, My third lesson I learned this year was about God's presence in my life. Um, And I heard at church uh, through a message that, you know, God's presence is what sets you apart from other people on earth. And one of the ways I really learned about God's presence this year was becoming a mom. And I just lived with a greater awareness of his presence in my life. And uh, I kind of looked back at my, my year and in Genesis, it talks, Jacob, there's actually scripture where Jacob talks about, he went to sleep and he woke up in Genesis and he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't aware of it. And I kind of look back through my year and I'm like, surely God, you were in my year and I wasn't even aware of it. A lot of my time was spent just being a mom at home this year. I wasn't out doing a ton of different things like I normally would have been. Um, I was, my, my place was really at home this year, but God was in that place. Um, and I wasn't even really aware of it. He was in the menial tasks that I, I seemed to think they were menial, changing diapers and, you know, cleaning up, spit up and up all night. Um, but I learned that he's in, he's with me in everyday life. And this year I probably spent the least amount of quiet time with him in terms of, I don't have, didn't have hours to journal. I didn't have hours to spend reading the Bible or praying, but it's interesting that, I think in this season of life, I felt his presence closer to me than ever before. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me more than ever before. And I I think that's such an awesome thing that, you know, even just giving him a little bit of time, the time that you have, you know, his presence is with you wherever you go and no matter what you're doing and what seasons of life. And so I learned that this year. um, And that was really, really exciting for me. Um, Another area I learned to learned in this past year was around fear and worry. 
I had a lot of fear and anxiety just going into having a baby this year. Um, I worried about labor, about finances, how to take care of a a child. (laughs) You know, I learned to pray through my fears and just talk them out with others and to really trust God more. Um, You know, some of my my fears are just common to everyone, but fear of lack, that we won't have enough money, fear of inadequacy, that we won't be enough, or fear of failure, like I'll never do anything significant with my life. Um, I had a big fear of missing out, you know, being at work or being at home, both kind of made me feel like I was cheating one or the other. I had a fear of just wasted, wasted work, not working on the right things, um, or striving in vain. Um, fear of not accomplishing my purpose, you know, just living an average life or fear of not making a difference, not live, you know, really living beyond myself or a fear of making wrong decisions and missing it. And, and really with all of this fear and, and I, and I, think this is some one of the biggest things I learned was just in Psalm 34, four, it says that I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and he freed me from all of my fears. And, you know, when fear tries to creep in my mind or my heart or this house again, I always just, you know, use that scripture that I prayed to the Lord. He answered me. He freed me from all my fears. I'm free. And I, I'm getting a greater revelation of his love and his perfect love that just casts out fear. And so, um, that's something that I'm still continuing to grow in. But one of the big things that I learned this past year. Uh, another thing I learned was really about purpose. And I have a whole bunch of notes and things that I've learned about purpose this year, but I really want to hone in on, on one key area of purpose that I've learned. Uh, first, I wrote and finished my mission statements. And I, this, this has been on my heart for a while to do, and it was actually inspired by Rick Warren and the Purpose Driven Life, it was to write out your mission statements, write out your confessions over your life. And I started to do that this past year. And wow, I look back and I read them every single day, and I'm just inspired by how awesome that God you know, brought specific confessions to me and how awesome his promises are and some things that I started to write down and collect over the past year or two and really kind of finalize my mission statement. And it pumps me up every day. I get so excited and encouraged about it and it really gives me meaning. But another thing that I really learned about purpose this year was that, you know, part of my purpose is being about being a leader, not just to the typical places where you would normally think about being a leader um, in your job or at church or in your community. But I learned that part of my purpose is called to be a leader in my own family and with those very close to me. And it's so easy to, you know, overlook those people. But um, in Isaiah 58, verse 6 through 11, it talks about, it says, don't hide from your relatives who need your help. And then it goes on to say that then you will call on the Lord and the Lord will answer you. Then your light will shine out of the darkness and darkness around you will be as bright as noon. Don't hide from people who need you. Don't hide from your relatives or those closest to you. And I just felt like that. I really needed that this year that, you know, I've focused a lot of my energy in the past on being a leader in the the typical places where I needed to be a leader in in work world or in church world. But I needed to really learn how to be a, a leader in my own home and with those closest to me. And that means, you know, leading up, you know, leading to, you know, uncles, aunts, dads, parents, grandparents, um, you know, leading uh, laterally and leading to those, the next generation coming, um, up, you know, as, as nieces and nephews or kids, um, that are, that, that, you know, below you. And really what that meant for me was just finding needs and filling them, you know, and it starts with your family. It's just looking around, what are the needs in your family? Um, what are the hurts maybe, or what are the the areas where you can make a difference and start with your family. I think that's that, that was just a really big part of my purpose that I learned this year was how to be a leader in my own, my own family with those closest to me. And obviously still going to be working on that for many years to come. Um, another area where God uh, really refined me this year is around my character. And, um, you know, he continues to refine me and sharpen my character. And I think this is one of the biggest areas I believe God wants me to focus on for 2017, but what, just kind of keeping it to a, a short nugget of, of character that I learned was in Second uh, Samuel 22, verse 31 through 36. Um, David talks about your help made me great. And he was talking about God, that God, your help made me 
made, made me great. And I, and for me, I don't need to make myself great. And I think, you know, I, sometimes I try my own strength to make a difference or to be this great leader. And God really spoke to me this year that it comes naturally as a byproduct of just following him and obeying his voice and keeping a healthy heart, keeping my heart healthy, being self-aware of the condition of my heart, um, being self-aware in the presence of others, um, that, and, you know, I don't have any blind spots or lids that are holding me back. And I think that's one of the most important leadership qualities is really just being self-aware and making any necessary changes that you need to become a better leader. And often that happens in the presence of community or accountability or just time with God. And so I learned this year that, you know, you don't need to make yourself great, but really try or try in your own strength to make a difference. It just comes naturally as that byproduct is falling hard after him. And so as I do that, and as I start to follow hard after him, he, he refines me and he's pruning me and he's just chiseling my character each and every day. And, um, I'm, I'm starting to really live out of my heart. I'm trying to really live out of my heart and, and being me and being comfortable being me. And, um, actually I was in a mom group this past year. And one of the things they said, which I loved, they, they talked about, don't water yourself down to suit someone else's palate and, you know, be you in all situations with all people. And I'm still learning how to do that and learning how to be me and be comfortable with that. But it, I think it really starts with developing good character and a healthy heart and being self-aware of any issues that I need to address. And God kind of worked that, that out through me this year. Um, another area I learned about was just being faithful um, through any times of test trials or difficult seasons of life, just keep showing up. And I, this, this almost like becomes my life theme. I think in some ways, um, if anyone knows my testimony, just with my mom passing away, um, I've always felt like a little bit of like my mission statement in life was just keep showing up and just don't quit and go again, go again, go again, you know, don't lose hope, commit to the finish line, um, you know, commit to the big goal and short term setbacks or these ups and downs of life just won't phase you. And I feel like, you know, this was another year where God just saying to my heart, continue to be faithful, serve other people, serve other people's dreams, you know, enjoy every season of life. Don't quit. Even the hard times, just keep going and, you know, keep, you know, keep, keep staying strong to the very end. And, and oftentimes when I want to quit or give up, God always just reminds me, don't leave before you leave. Don't, don't leave before I tell you to leave and stay strong until the very end. I feel like, that was a really big theme for me this year. And also I had a, a few friends of mine, you know, go through some difficult times this year as well. And God reminded me to always stay full of his word and just stay filled up with, with, um, the right things in your heart so that when you're called on to help others, it comes naturally as an abundance in your heart, um, that you can help other people and cause you're full of him. You're full of, uh, the word of God and encouragement and, it comes from a place of overflow and not from a place of emptiness. And so, um, you know, working on faithfulness this year was, was another area that I grew in and staying filled up with his word to help others that are going through some difficult times as well or some areas I learned. Um, another one was around marriage and this is, this is just quick, but, um, you know, learning how to protect family time now that, uh, that we have Olivia and just marriage time, uh, you know, finding ways to go on dates and learning new ways of communicating with each other. Um, we implemented a few new systems that help to, to prioritize what's important to us, but I feel like we'll always be working on just protecting the spirit of our marriage. Um, I really do believe there's power in unity and just staying on the same page and staying united together is really powerful. And so I'm really working hard to not just in, injure the sacredness or the spirit of our marriage and, and never taking each other for granted and making sure that each other are a priority. Um, we know we have a newborn and a baby that requires a lot of our time and attention, but prioritizing each other is just so important in this season of life as we're building a family. And, um, as we are building family, it does look different than it did before. Life is different. And at first I started to grieve my old life of adventure and spontaneity and on the go and traveling and, um, you know, just all of that life at first I, I kind of grieved it. Um, but I've learned a whole new life with Olivia and a whole new marriage, um, just to create new traditions and new memories together, new and exciting ways that include Olivia. And it's been really fun to do that this year. 
Um, last, I think there's two more. Um, I learned a lot about just, again, L3 leadership, building a business and um, forming this organization. Um, there's power when leaders unite and gather together. And I've found that this past year, I've learned so much from these leaders in this community. Um, but leaders, I, I've noticed that people get healthier, sharper, they get more inspired, they're better, they're stronger, they're wiser, they have bigger dreams in the community in the presence of other leaders. And so that's why I never take this group for granted. I, I mean, I'm so humbled and excited to be a part of it. And there's two things that God really kind of spoke to my heart about with L3 leadership this year, this past year, um, was to care for the flock that's entrusted to us. And I feel like God will give you a flock, whether that's like your workplace, your family, um, a small group, a church group, but they're actually people that are assigned to your care. And I, I, God just prompted me to invest in those people, to do anything I can to lift, encourage, promote them, help them, grow them to their maximum potential as much as you possibly can. Just be a part of their lives because that's their specific flock and their specific people assigned to your care. Um, likewise, there's also people that are assigned and designed by God to help you in your calling and be humble enough to accept their help. So that was a really big challenge for me too, is that there's people called to come alongside of me and help me and, and, and to be humble enough to accept that and not try to do everything on my own. And so those two areas around, you know, making sure that the people assigned to my care are looked after and provided for, and then also being humble enough to accept help from others that are called to really help me in my calling um, were two areas I learned. And then lastly, this is probably the, the toughest lesson I learned this past year was around submission and authority. And, um, you know, God sends people to grow us. <laughs> they often frustrate us, but they're growing us. And I had some difficult authority in my life this past year that was really challenging for me. And I learned how to do things very, probably the hard way, uh, without, complaining or arguing or gossiping. And I've learned that complaining and gossiping, arguing are, and negative attitudes are just toxic and they can destroy cultures. And, um, that's one of the biggest things I learned was, was really not to have a negative attitude, especially on the job. Um, you know, you're paid to do your job. You're paid to solve problems. You're paid to accomplish goals. You're not paid to, uh, gossip or have, you know, you know, have a negative attitude. If you have an issue or problem, you know, elevate it, but, if, and if you can't be at a company, just leave if it's an, a really big issue. But if not, then change your attitude. And I really do believe that negative attitudes can stunt your growth and limit your capacity. And it can really sear your conscious over time if you continue to have a negative attitude. That bitter root can grow inside you. And so I learned a lot about um, authority that was difficult to, to, to have in my life. And one of the scriptures that God spoke to me this year was in Psalm 37. It's in the message translation. It says that God will validate your life in the clear light of day and stamp you with approval at high noon. Don't bother with those that climb the ladder who elbow their way to the top. Less is more and more is less. One righteous will outclass 50 wicked. And that really encouraged me to not worry about you know, other people trying to elbow their way to the top um, and just worry about my own work, do my own job. And the second scripture that God encouraged me with was first Peter two and 18 through 20. It says, and it talks about slaves and masters, but I kind of changed it to be your employee or employee employers. And it says as an employee, be good employees to your employers, not just to good employers, but also to bad ones show respect, not only when they are kind and good to you, but also when they're overbearing, cruel, unjust, crooked, what counts is that you put up with it for God's sake when you're treated badly for no good reason. There's no practical virtue in accepting punishment that you well deserve. But if you're treated badly for good behavior and continue on in spite of it to be a good employee, that's what counts for God. Be content to let God set things right. And I learned that no matter what, if you have a good boss, a bad boss, good workplace, a bad workplace, if God's called you to be there, you know, don't lower your standards just because you might have some difficult people you work around, but, you know, put up with it and, and really have a good attitude as a result. God will, you know, God will set things right for you. 
And one of the the big lessons I learned was in Genesis where Hagar was essentially this Egyptian slave girl of Abram and Sarai, and she was made to sleep essentially with Abram. She became pregnant, and Sarai kind of treated her harshly, and so Hagar, Hagar ran away. But the angel of the Lord turned her, told her to return to her mistress, return to Sarai, and submit to her authority. And I always thought that was such an interesting concept that you know, she, God required Hagar to return to Sarai, even when Sarai wasn't making the right decisions and was beaten, she was treating her poorly. And I think there's a season of submitting to poor leadership sometimes or difficult people who aren't making the right decisions or aren't making, you know, aren't serving God. And I think everyone's going to be required at some point in time to learn submission, but, and it was wrong what Sarai did, yet God told her to submit anyway. And I think, in my heart, I learned that it's difficult to learn submission, but I think that God, as a result, will um, will be with you each and every step of the way. I learned how to you know, work hard, show up every day, just be consistent, keep my mouth shut, and do my own work, and just being aware of a critical spirit that can really extinguish the Holy Spirit in my life. But you know, to really understand that most of the time when you have a difficult person you work with, it's often as a result of just some unhealthiness in their life that maybe a hurt or something they've gone through in their past and that we're called as leaders sometimes to messy stables. One one, one of a leader used to say that, that leaders are called to difficult situations and difficult work environments and messy stables. But as a result, we're called to, to rise up and be leaders in spite of it. And so um, for me this year, I learned submission and it was difficult and hard for me. But, um, you know, in the end, I think it made, developed my character even more. And so those are some of the lessons that I learned this year. I'm really so thankful for uh, being able to just reflect back on my year. I encourage you all to do that. Um, if you don't journal, I encourage you to journal. It's one of the greatest and easiest ways to look back on your year. Um, but I'm excited for this year, what's to come in 2017. Um, if you'd like to share your year under review with me, I'd love to, to hear it. Um, and so you can always email uh, Laura Smith at l3leadership.org. And I'd love to kind of hear ways that you're growing as well or leave a, a comment um, on this podcast and we can, we can um, exchange lessons learned for the year. I'd love that. So thanks so much for listening. Hope that you, you gained some value from, from some of my past lessons learned and excited for a new year together with the community of L3 Leadership. Thanks so much for listening. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to Laura's Top Lessons Learned. We hope that you enjoyed it and you can find ways to connect with her and see her show notes at l3leadership.org forward slash episode 133. I want to thank our other sponsor, Bab Inc., led by my friend Russell Livingston, and he is a, has a huge passion for investing in next generation leaders, which is why he hosts our monthly leadership breakfast. Uh, but they're in a phenomenal insurance company, and they're doing some really unique things with organizations, and I really encourage you to check them out. You can check out the great work that they're doing at babbins.com. That's B-A-B-B-I-N-S dot com. As always, if you want to stay up to date with everything going on at L3 Leadership, you can sign up for our email list at l3leadership.org, and you'll also get a free copy of my ebook, Making the Most of Mentoring. If this podcast added value to your life today, I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe and leave a rating and review. It does make a difference. And as always, I want to close with a quote. And Reed Hoffman said this. He said, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. I just want to encourage you, hey, whatever you're waiting to ship, just ship it. You're going to be embarrassed. You're going to look back and say, wow, I can't believe I actually put that out there. But hey, if you don't put it out, you'll never have a chance to improve it. So just launch. Thanks for listening. Be a part of L3 Leadership. Laura and I appreciate you so much. And we will talk to you next episode.